Well, I want to welcome you back uh, to our ongoing focus on the book of Romans. Uh, I'm Pastor Greg Kowser, and I'm so glad uh, that you are studying along with us. Uh, we are uh, coming up here this February 12th. We are coming up to chapter 7 in the book of Romans. In the history of the study of the book of Romans, this is one of the uh, many controversial passages as to what Paul is actually speaking about. But I think what we're going to find out, uh, we uh, have been talking about uh, our desperate need for a Savior in the first four chapters because all have sinned and everyone uh, fails to meet up to God's just requirements for us. And Jesus had to step in and do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. Well, then we got to chapter 5. Uh, we found out what had happened uh, when we believed in Christ. We found out that we've been put back into a relationship of flourishing and love with our Father, uh, united to this second Adam who undid what the first Adam did. Uh, we get all the privileges of a place of favor with God our Father. Then in chapter 6, we talked about the fact that we've been changed. We've been made new so that we're no longer under the domination of sin in our life. And when we get to chapter 8, past the chapter that we're going to be talking about, we're going to talk about the gift of the Spirit that enables us uh, to live into our new identity now that we've been made new in Christ. In between 5 and 6 and 8, though, we hit chapter 7. And one of the ways of reading chapter 6 and 8 may think that, well, the power of sin has been broken. And I've got the Spirit of God in me. It should be uh, a life of perfection, a life without challenges, a life where I don't need to worry about the impact of sin. Well, we're going to see in chapter 7, Paul is going to make sure that we understand that even though we have been delivered from sin's penalty, because Christ took it for us, even though the power of sin over us has been broken so that we don't have to, we still have not been delivered from its presence. And its presence within us and the effects of sin around us in the world outside is going to create uh, a tension in the life of the Christian, a battle that we are going to face. And so Paul is going to take us into this battle. He's going to talk about the fact that uh, we're no longer under the law's condemnation. Uh, we're no longer uh, uh, fated to disobey it because we're under a new covenant that has given us a new spirit, um, uh, a new heart, uh, and uh, we have the very presence of God with us. But at the same time, he wants to remind us that uh, we're, we're on the way toward the goal for which God saved us. And, and being people who are on the way, uh, we're going to have a real battle with sin. And so as we look at this, it really comes uh, to talk about, well, what do we expect to be uh, the nature of our Christian life? There's a lot of different visions out there. The health and wealth one is uh, if you're uh, believing in God and serving Him and doing the right things, you're going to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. There's other people that think, uh, you can arrive at a sinless state this side of heaven. Well, Paul wants to say, and as we're going to talk about, that yes, you have been saved, but no, you have not arrived. And so you are, on the one hand, someone who has sinned to, to, that's, that's pulling against you, uh, fighting in your inner world uh, over against what God has recreated you to want and to be. And so we're going to talk about the nature of the Christian life. What should we expect from it? What is it? Uh, should we expect to, to be sinless? Should we expect to be able to put away sin uh, fully and finally this side of heaven? How do we acknowledge that we are sinners without being glib about sin? So we're going to talk about those questions. So if you're thinking about your small group, here's some questions that I want to encourage you to think about uh, after we have talked on Sunday. Right? If we look at this portrait that Paul is going to paint in chapter 7, how does it encourage you? Many people would look at it and say, oh, it looks bleak. It looks difficult. Well, I want you to think about how does it encourage you? And in particular, uh, what is liberating about being honest about the fact that you are wretched, but you are forgiven? What is that? How do, how do you hold those two together? What's the encouragement there? What happens if you forget either one? What happens if you forget that you're still liable to sin and what happens if you forget that you've been fully forgiven and have the grace of God? What's the two poles that if you miss either one of those 
you'll miss out on the life that you have. So that's what we're looking at this Sunday, Romans chapter 7. So I want to encourage you to read and study in advance, and we're going to walk our way through that. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday.